part of this uh, this morning session. Um, I would like to give the word to Tibor. He's a representative of our association, ISCA, and he will tell you more about the situation in higher education in Slovenia. Okay, so I'll present a text uh, prepared by a few members of our organization. So, uh, to begin with, if you have to use one word to sum up the trends in higher education while keeping, keeping it informative, we would use the term commercialization. However, it would be wrong to claim that commercialization is limited only to higher education, since the whole public sector is subject to it. Uh, commercialization, in the broader sense, can be defined as a change in the way public institutions function, so that uh, the public and the private sector function almost pretty much the same, and the only difference remains in ownership. In other words, commercialization is a process in which the purpose of the services provided by the public sector isn't ensuring such a minimal standard of living, but is instead driven by profits, as is the case in the private, se private sector. Commercialization of the public sector can be seen as a political question and can be seen as a policy that rejects the state regulation of the economy, so a so-called uh, free market doctrine. While it certainly isn't simply an ideological conflict between either free market or statism, Actual changes can be seen as a consequence or as a result of changes in state funding of uh, public institutions. The commercialization of the public sector is simply a reaction or an adaptation to the financial cuts made by the government. So, uh, because public institutions require a certain amount of funds in order to function properly, uh, they are forced into a search for uh, new alternative source sources of funding, which would cover the deficit caused by uh, the public cuts, cuts in public funding. So institutions are able to find this alternative source by interacting with the capitalist economy, which can be done in different ways. Uh, the first way is that the, the public institutions themselves can adopt the same way of functioning, the modus operandi of the private sector, so that they start acting in the same way, which in one way deteriorates the situation for the employees in worsening their conditions and makes uh, work harder. And it also uh, can be seen in introduction of payments in exchange for services. And this is, of course, a serious issue because public institutions, as elements of the welfare state, are supposed to assist in reducing the inequalities caused by the capitalist society, what also means that the lowest strata of the society depend on public institutions being free of charge. But now, if public services become payable, the underprivileged will not, will not be able to afford them anymore. So this would, make, this would have dire consequences for the lower strata's well-being. And on the other hand, if uh, public institutions begin to offer their services on the free market, higher education actually becomes a research institute in the hands of capital. So the, all, um, the already existing public research institutes conduct research for the, public, uh, for the private sector, which then just buys and patents this knowledge, which was produced by public money. Like such practice is common abroad, for example, for the pharmaceutical industry, which clearly funds its research from taxpayer money. Uh, also, commercialization is also often connected with uh, reduced quality of services because costs are being strongly reduced in order to make space for more profit. So, um, there are two fields in which commercialization of higher education can be best observed like on the one hand the introduction of tuition fees and on the other hand in the changes of uh, curriculums either of an individual curriculum or uh, curriculums of study programs or even common changes of whole uh, higher education its primary principles of higher education so uh, because all institutions offering education carry out their traditional role of ideological apparatuses of the state we, uh, the members who wrote this text also aim to produce a basic analysis of these elements, like in Slovenia. 
And uh, because higher education is merely one branch of the public sector, we'll also shed light upon the relationship between the government and the whole public sector. So, to start with tuition fees. Nowadays, in Slovenia, undergraduate studies are free of tuition fees, which is uh, at least implicitly stipulated by the current uh, legislation regarding higher education affairs. It, uh, the law states that citizens of Slovenia or any other uh, country in the European Union must not, be asked, must not be asked to pay an amount of tuition fees for a program which doesn't surpass the national standard. So, um, in Slovenia, uh, tuition fees are forbidden, and they can be this. Um, so, free education here can be seen as a product of class work, uh, class work for achievements. Like, um, well, it is possible to speak of the collapse of the welfare state in Central and Western Europe, um, which dates which dates back to Keynes' model of capitalism. The students from former Yugoslav and Eastern Bloc states owe their tuition-free studying to socialism, but these gains in accessibility are slowly disappearing at different levels of pace, depending on each state. So, studying in Slovenia is formally free, but the actual situation is a bit different, since there are uh, two, two types of studies in Slovenia. There is a regular full-time study, and there is an extra, let's call it, part-time study, um, which was originally intended for, stud for students that are employed full-time. And since the actual study for such students can only be a part-time activity, the actual teaching context, contents of the study, study program should differ from those of full-time studies. But even though officially full-time and part-time studies should be set separated from one another, this isn't true in practice. Some faculties already draw no lines between them, so we are also witnessing examples that um, a large amount, for example, at some postgraduate studies, a large amount of spaces are reserved exclusively for part-time studies. So this is especially problematic for study programs where um, an undergraduate study has barely any symbolic value and the postgraduate study is a must but it is payable. It is mostly uh, forced through part-time studies. Um, and to continue, like for example, there was a case at the Faculty of Sports where half of spaces for postgraduate studies were designated for payable part-time studies with a, a tuition fee of about 7,000 euros per year. Although, if you want to like, get a job as a sport teacher, you have to have a master's degree. You need to have it. So, the abuse of the part-time study and the introduction of tuition fees in general isn't limited only to certain faculties. They are, are long-term long trends and con their consistence, um, the politicians in charge and the academic elite uh, within the university itself is pushing for these reforms that would extend these payable studies. And the changes to the Higher Education Act are never out of fashion. Each and every new bill every year that is proposed tries to implement either tuition fees or uh, voucher systems and uh, try to subject higher education to the demands of the market. And also there are plans, for example, to introduce playable long-distance education in, or in order to, um, to gain more money out of the market. So actually, education at university level is not anymore considered just an universal human uh, right, but it's actually, actually considered an investment, investment in human capital. Uh, uh, yes. So, um, okay, so I'll uh, switch to the curriculum. Um, there is an ongoing trend of unprecedented mass studying in all former Yugoslav countries. Like, uh, the reason behind it isn't the strife for a more egalitarian society, but actually the nature of the reason is much more ideological. Um, because, um, um, because the traditional industrial-based economies <coughs> move, are moving towards post-industrial societies or knowledge societies, where uh, the existence of extensive research, uh, research and educational institutions um, is pretty much 
nearly an imperative. So, in addition to the problems with financing, there are also issues with the quality of these mass studies. And on, on the way, one way, we can see that uh, the quality decreases with the increase in the number of students. So, um, this can be seen with the larger student to lecturer ratio. And in practice, this means that uh, every Every pedagogical worker, every teacher can on average direct much less attention to each student involved. So, and apart uh, from the effects of mass studying, uh, there is also a question to be asked about the um, rigidity, rigidity of the examination criteria. Like if uh, the criteria reflects the level of knowledge obtained, it must also be added that this level is by definition relative because it is contextualized by some contemporary relevant statistical average. Simply said, just because someone has high grades doesn't necessarily mean that their understanding is uh, true, that they really understand things. So, on the contrary, it means that they have managed to achieve an above average grade at standardized testing and faced with mass studying, um, the criteria tends to be lowered uh, the criterion for passing, uh, passing exams is often lowered or even the curriculum itself tends to be shortened. So we see a combination of both phenomena. Um, and so the Bologna reform was supposed to present an answer to the problem of higher education but um, it is worth mentioning that uh, there, was, there were more reasons for the implementation. There were tendencies for internalization um, and um, the main argument was that with the Bologna system the university would become a prominent member of the European Centre but of course this was a completely ideological perception um, it was a completely political and ideological uh, perception but then the Bologna reform was supposed to shorten the time of studying but it actually ex extended it for an extra year <coughs> Um, because the undergraduate program is now a year shorter, mostly just three years, but the degree has been devalued. So in order to get the same education as before, you have to study for five years. So you make an extra year. Um, the undergraduate study became just shorter and its function changed. So it just serves as an introduction. And uh, often the studying material is reduced. Um, there's more tendency towards just basic understanding, more learning by heart, and um, etc. So, um, there's also an important characteristic of the Bologna system. Uh, it is that it sets the maximization of a student's own productivity as his main goal. So, uh, a student has to hand in various home assignments and reports, they need to have uh, a lot of presentations, various tests during the seminars and so on. So we have intensive day-by-day -day studying, but day-by-day -day studying of course isn't necessarily that, but we have to remind ourselves here that this objective of this day-by-day -day studying uh, isn't a complete understanding of the studying material and knowledge, but it is just of maximizing the student's productivity, like at work. So you have to uh, complete this seminar, you have to complete uh, this work, this presentation, and so on. Um, so this result, uh, results in handing in obligatory assignments that usually serve, sometimes they don't serve no purpose whatsoever. So uh, similarly, the study under the Bologna system doesn't consider students to be responsible sometimes. So if the old system assumed that their student is an adult capable of making like, rational decisions and bearing the consequences of those, that he is a responsible individual, this isn't the case under the Bologna system. So this, uh, there are examples of uh, lessons keeping track of attendance, uh, and some lectures actually deem attendance levels as a prerequisite for attending the exams. So a combination of obligatory attendance, home, home assignments and reports is like um, giving a message that the university isn't an, isn't an institution where in-depth knowledge can be obtained, but more a difficult high, high school. Um, the curriculum also reflects the commercialization of higher education, um, so, it's more being like a publicly financed 
publicly financed research institute for the private sector and uh, like performing training of the future workforce. And the public funding is never sufficient and it's uh, consistently being cut. Um, and this benefits, of course, the uh, owners of private capital, capitalists, because of two reasons. Because, uh, on the first way, uh, firstly, a public university is funded by the state and is then a cheaper option for the capitalists in obtaining new, um, new, law, new knowledge, new patents. And secondly, the research project includes students who present a free workforce. In quite the same way, the appears for bigger adjustment of higher education to the needs of the economy are manifested in political programs of political parties. So, of course, cooperation between higher education and economy isn't uh, necessarily bad, but um, of course, higher education should be an isolated parallel world, but of course, the question is the term in which this takes place. The problem is when the university just serves the need of the individual companies in the market and ignores, for example, um, long-term scientific research. So sometimes it's even not, it's catastrophic even from the practical perspective. And also the free market actually isn't at all stable, but it's rather chaotic with the constant uh, changes and the curriculum simply cannot be adapted overnight like the market changes overnight. Um, so, this uh, approach also first to take major crisis into account because of the inherent characteristics of a capitalist production. The crises are periodical and represent a radical change in the demands of the uh, market. Like there was a nice example in Slovenia, where um, there a nice example in Slovenia is civil engineering. Because before the crisis, this was considered a very good uh, program, a very popular pro uh, program. As, and then as soon as the crisis hit, this changed because the majority of civil engineering companies were <coughs> in debt or bankrupt. So um, resulting in much lower numbers of students even choosing to study civil engineering. So we stress this pattern of events isn't a consequence of insufficient adjustment of higher education to the needs of the economy. Um, The, actually, the fact that uh, putting higher education to the demands of the market uh, shows a lack of long-term vision. Mm, and also, of course, the higher education cannot be completely isolated from other social spheres, but also blindly following the capitalist economy can only represent an occasional source of income, but not the its sole purpose. Um, uh, then there was... Uh, case about uh, ideology. Um, I'm thinking about how to shorten this. Of course, this was a very long analysis. Um, so with the collapse of Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union, any alternative to capitalism was destroyed in the field of ideology. Uh, powerful states that at least hypothetically presented an, an alternative to the Western capitalism collapse, so free market ideology could achieve um, could, uh, move on uh, worldwide and uh, the welfare state that was a compromise realized by, by the um, action of the working class became an uh, uh, anachronism and um, with the collapse of this um, possible alternative the illusion of the benevolence of capitalism was also no longer needed and um, this meant the start of collapse of social safety nets, um, which to some ensure the minimal standard of living. And now we have new values. Instead of values of the welfare state, we have values of individualism. So that each individual is responsible for their own life, the success or failure, and that all is strictly in the hands of in the individual is supposed and the dependence of, so, of social solidarity like leads to failure. Um, okay. So there's a firm belief that anyone can achieve success if they only try hard enough. But of course, let's leave aside, uh, aside that it's mathematically improbable that everyone could beat at the top. 
So the biggest problem of this illusion is that it completely ignores all social circumstances in which an individual functions. That it assumes equality in a society divided into different social classes. Like for example, unemployment isn't treated as a social problem, as a systemic problem, but as an individual problem. Like employment services no longer occupy themselves with actively employing, but they are um, occupying themselves with improving employability. Like they don't, uh, the state doesn't try to reduce unemployment, but it escalates the conflict between the employees and the reserve army of unemployed. Um, an important uh, equipment here in the university are the so-called career centers, which function almost exclusively on the principle of the neoliberal, neoliberal perception of the problem of unemployment. Like that it is all um, a problem of an individual. Um, despite occasionally publishing job opportunities, um, their main message is not to think about job positions as uh, a given, as, as given, but that a first fight for a job should simply be taken as a fact of life. So, um, okay. So about concerning the attitude of mainstream politics towards the public sector. So. Um, of course, higher education is subject to broader uh, social trends, like commercialization, as mentioned in the beginning, that is connected to public cuts. And in Slovenia, we have experienced similar cuts since the beginning of the decade. The first austerity measures in higher education were uh, introduced in 2011, and even after three new governments, um, this hasn't changed. There is still a tendency towards new and new uh, cuts. Maybe there was a change in rhetoric, but otherwise just tendency to cut more in public education. Uh, very important here is an act for balancing of public finances of 2013 um, that also is still in place, although two governments have changed in between. Because this act renders employing within the public sector almost impossible. And this leads to different paradoxes. Like there are waiting, uh, like this is an example from the health system. So there are waiting hours in public health uh, system that are getting longer and longer. But there is also a lack of medical staff. And but thanks to these uh, austerity measures, they, they, they can't hire anyone. So, um, we have this absurd situations which can also be seen in higher education through similar examples. So, um, the politicians in power are well aware that their austerity, me austerity measures lead into commercialization of the public sector, since the latter is not only tolerated but also encouraged. So, beside the uh, aforementioned uh, law on the law on uh, balancing the public finance, uh, finances which limit employment. Um, there is also a push for market funded uh, research and now we also have different versions, versions of new laws on higher education. Um, so um, for now we have uh, the latest draft was introduced one month ago but for now is not a, uh, a threat also of course it um, it presented just a new increase in the intensity of commercialization of educations and it's a uh, it was apparent from even from the introduction of this concept that was presented of a new law that uh, the government didn't think of commercialization as something negative, but it was one of its goals. So, because they are tailoring higher education to the demands of the individual uh, capitalists, and they are also trying to strengthen the, uh, the whole logic behind it, the whole neoliberal logic about employability, etc. So, um, both elements of commercialization have already been discussed, so um, we will also point out the system-wide dimensions of these problems of public education. So, um, um, the public education itself 
um, isn't like an egalitarian system, but there are also problems within public education because there is a rigid uh, hierarchy between uh, in psychic higher education because we have, for example, assistants that are paid the least, but their basic labor workload is the highest and can and is also trying to be intensified. And on the other hand, and also many of them are employed uh, precariously, and there are similar cases, of course, everywhere. Um, in the public sector, so despite the fact that commercialization of the public sector is the direct consequence of budget cuts, it is also in the personal interest of the elite in these public uh, institutions, and they also begin functioning in a capitalist way. Like, um, we have examples of public and private uh, partnerships, and then we have uh, examples like of uh, market-oriented projects of universities because the faculty only gets uh, about 10% of those funds from these projects but the rest goes to the research team and mostly of course the elite gets the most of this money so they directly profit on the research made uh, on the university that is sold on. Um, so also we have to say that the, also the public sector itself, itself isn't without problems so it has its uh, different strata, it has some hierarchy. So also we have to um, here understand that there are different agents which would speed up or slow down the process. So we have to be careful where searching for allies in the fight against neoliberalism, about against commercialization, about the uh, against these capitalist tendencies tendencies we live in today. So, for example, not everyone that opposes privatization opposes the liberalization of economy in general. They might be bothered only by the fact that they, they themselves won't benefit from it. So, um, also, there is a question about what words freedom and autonomy mean, because they can be understood in very different contexts. So, these aren't just friends that are confined to Slovenia, or just former Yugoslav countries or just Europe, so these are uh, capitalist phenomena, um, social phenomena on a global scale. And uh, introduction of tuition fees, the degradation of the quality of studying, privatization of what is left of national and social property, austerity measures, rapid growth of social inequality and lowering of a standard, common standard of living, also optimization of society, this isn't confined to individual countries. We are talking about issues on a global scale, so global scale, so answers also have to be so globally. So um, we have to actually build an international front line of unity through which we would address these problems and fight for a positive change. Um, also, of course, this is also part of a global economic system, so we also have to think about how changing the uh, global system towards a system that would work towards well-being of all and not just focus on increasing economic growth and profit. So this would be it. Okay. Thank you Tibor very much for this analysis. Um, I would like to open the debate again. So if anybody has a question for um, Tibor or any other uh, delegation that has presented themselves already before, um, please raise your hand. Yeah. I have a question um, maybe for the other delegations. Um, Tibor was talking about mainly in Slovenia the case of commercialization inside of the university, inside of the institutions. Uh, and, um, as far as I followed, you didn't really mention this in, in your cases, so could you, could you talk about that? Yes, sir. Well, I, I just mentioned some... Uh, let's say, Microphone, please. The red button. <coughs> okay. I just had to mention some cases, for example, companies uh, coming to the faculty and uh, making promotional campaigns or putting players and advertisements all over the faculty. Uh, till now, that is the only activity where even it's, it's obvious that it's a commercialization of the university, uh, but it's not structured. Let's say it's not. It doesn't function as part as part of uh, the structure of the faculty. 
because as I said, we don't have the law now. They want to change the law, and that is uh, the point where uh, this is uh, is going to to be more obvious. Now they, for example, they just. Uh, if a company wants to make a promotional campaign, they just uh, get the permission from the dean or from someone else. Uh, but uh, the real commercialization of the public university will come with this reform. Uh, we are, I think we are lucky to up now, up to now it's, it, it hasn't happened, not in, in such a big scale. Uh, public universities are being financed, although they are not productive in the uh, market terms. For example, philosophical faculty, they don't produce anything for the society in the market terms. Let's say it can be sold and can be bought, but they, all, they are being financed. When the logic changes, they are not going to be financed, of course, because what it will matter is the productivity in the market. What can you produce in the faculty level, in the department level, in the university level? And uh, in the countries where the neoliberal reforms have been implemented before, now we see the results. There are many faculties, usually social sciences, that cannot manage to, uh, to sustain themselves in the uh, very harsh competition with, uh, let's say, medicine faculties and so on. They are just going to be closed. But now in my country, up to now, we don't have this phenomenon because we didn't have the law. So now, if it changes, of course, it's, it's automatically it's going to be like this. It's a uh, historical determination, let's say. Um, would the delegates from Serbia like to ask a question? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question again? <laughs> I'm just... I see we're a bit tired. Okay, um, so... Tuba was talking about the main problem in Slovenia being mm -hmm. commercialization inside. So basically, uh, probably the amount of um, tuition fees paid inside of public universities is comparable to the amount that is paid in um, private universities even. So could you comment on that? Are, are, are public universities, for the right question, allowed to charge money? Yes, uh, the situation is that uh, 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 tuition fees at uh, private uh, universities and uh, and the public universities are uh, similar in uh, uh, order to uh, you know that the, the uh, cost of tuition fee uh, uh, is directed by the competition in the market. Uh, if some job uh, or some diploma is more successful in the market, uh, it's uh, a higher tuition fee. You know, for, for example, uh, my studies, the studies of philosophy, uh, the annual cost of tuition fee is like uh, uh, five, uh, 550 euros. But if you're studying something technologically, uh, something on the uh, faculty of technical science or something like that, the uh, tuition fees are like, uh, 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 like uh, 2,000 euros. Uh, uh, and stuff like that, and uh, uh, on uh, private university tuition fees like uh, I don't know 1,000 euros per uh, per year. Uh, so that's the situation there. Uh, also, this commercialization uh, applies to the public universities in uh, cases where uh, you have like uh, faculties uh, uh, that uh, are like uh, appears as a companies on the market. For example, uh, uh, in Novi Sad, there's uh, this uh, fact of uh, technological sciences which, which are like company. They have the projects, they charge, uh, uh, they, they have the profits. Uh, 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 the, st the students uh, make the projects and they have like the profits from it and uh, so on. Uh, also, uh, the uh, University, public university has this uh, autonomy, but as I mentioned before on the presentation, it's not uh, the autonomy of uh, scientific research and so on, but uh, economic autonomy. Mm -hmm. You know, they are, uh, like, uh, uh, autonomously can uh, charge the tuition fees as they like, as they need to, to uh, supplement it to the costs. Uh, uh, so there is, of course, the abuse of such position, uh, which leads to the raising of uh, 
corruption uh, uh, and actually uh, it, it turns the students and uh, professors against each other. For example, the media has, has uh, the professors support you, they have support from the, the university staff and you said, okay, their, their payment is like uh, uh, enormous and we don't have money and uh, they are getting money from us and we're like in the open position. Uh, so that's a big problem uh, there, and uh, I don't know if, if this answers your question, but I hope it. No, it does. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will tell something about the commercialization in Macedonia the universities. It can be spotted in some points. I mean, for example, in the past few years, uh, they make propaganda, especially from the uh, public universities. Uh, in the high schools, where they, in the last couple of months of the four years, senior year of the high schools, go and um, promote, promote their facilities, like uh, what options do they have, uh, what diploma will they get after they finish uh, the university, what can they work after that. And actually there are some competitions that make, they make, like there is a nanotechnology competition from the Faculty of uh, Metallurgy and Technological Sciences, uh, which promotes the facility and actually gains some results. Like, uh, I think I'm not sure, but from what I've heard, the last year they had 400, uh, like 80 uh, percent more students than the past years because of the competition. And the second thing, the second spot you can see the commercialization of the universities is that, I mean, it's a global trend to go to university. You can't get a job unless you have a diploma. Even if you have a diploma, you're not guaranteed that you'll get a job, especially, like you mentioned, with 32% uh, of unemployment in Macedonia. I think that answers your question. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? Mm. Then I would like to uh, ask something for all, all of the delegations. Um, you haven't said much about the uh, workers at, at the university, so um, what is their role? Are they connected in any unions or are they um, going with the processes coming from the state? And, um, and what is the relation between um, professors and assistants in, in your universities? Um, do any of them have more rights? Are there precarious positions? Yeah, I think inside university there are two kinds of workers, like administrative staff and the academic staff. Uh, now the, the administrative staff uh, it involves from the sanitary things and all these uh, secretaries and all these usual everyday uh, jobs. I think they have no rights at all. I mean, that there is no, no syndicates, no workers' unions in general level, and yeah, not to mention the faculty level or university level. But what is more disturbing is that even in the academic staff, there is no connection between them, at least in our faculty and in our university and in all the public universities. And what we have seen from the last protest is that uh, they are no, the professors are not participating. I mean, as it is supposed to be, because they are they have no connection. Since they have no connection with each other, again, they can act only as individuals. But they, when they act as individuals, they are unprotected. And uh, considering that the repression in university is very high, uh, the deans of the faculties usually are the uh, the obeyed militants of the political party who is in power. So for the lecturers, it's very hard to go publicly and support the students. And since they don't have, for example, a professor in union, they cannot uh, organize, get organized and support the, the students. I think uh, in, inside the public universities, there is uh, a lot of repression upon each one, not only the professors, but also to the lower level. And uh, the climate there is very, uh, demotivating when you, if you see it in this in this way, because it, it looks like there is no hope of organizing, that, or there is no hope of something coming from this part. I mean, uh, and we think that the only way is 
you organize the students. Because when you are a student uh, up to now, uh, you of course you pay fee and which is progressively increasing, but uh, you don't have so many obligations. And uh, you are a collective at least. You are like a hundred people who, who say all the day with each other, listen to each other. Uh, the professors on the other side are mostly act as individuals and it's very hard for them to organize. That's why uh, the, the, in the public universities there is no hope of, uh, of organizing a professor union or workers union inside the university because we don't have workers unions in the general level. So if we had a worker union in general level, uh, everyone would feel more protected and uh, maybe that would change something. Solidarness in, in Zagreb, that was, uh, yeah. uh, it was some sort of uh, uh, try to make a union uh, with students and professors together, but I don't know what happened with that. Does anybody know about that? Thing? I remember. Yeah, there was, they, they made, actually they were not a fighting organization, they were more uh, like, uh, um, making documents, uh, investigating stuff, and in that matter it was interesting. But in Serbia, uh, the professors, as, as Marco said, they all uh, are part of the, the repression. I mean, they're all, nobody, I mean, there was not one professor that uh, in uh, that uh, post uh, uh, 200 years, after 200s and when Bologna started, uh, nobody was uh, against Bologna. And now some professors, there are some individuals that are saying, uh, that are accusing the professor, said you never, you never said anything uh, uh, against that and now you're like uh, uh, criticizing the, the things. And they have a like, high pace, because of that they have an interest that we have a uh, high push of fees. And in that manner, the autonomy of the university is uh, pretty much reactionary, in that manner. Uh, but, of course, uh, we fight for uh, uh, truly autonomy of the university. And uh, as Comrade said uh, from Albania, sorry, I didn't, I didn't remember the name. Uh, Alban. Alban, yeah. And like Alban said, there are two kinds of workers in the, in the university, the, like, teaching ones who are not really workers, they are like petit bourgeois. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but they are, they are professionals. That's the, the, and the other one, the workers which like uh, door, door, works on the doormates uh, and stuff like that, they are always with us, but they are not organized. And some of the people try to organize them in that manner, but um, the, the important thing that they are always, when we blockade the university, they are always with us. Even today we see them. I saw some guy in the street uh, yesterday, which was a uh, uh, part of security. And we were all the time fighting with him, but he loved us and we loved him. Because, uh, you know, he had to do it, but, you know, he tried to... Uh, yeah, he tried to maneuver his, uh, his obligations. So, they are always with us. But they, yeah, that's the question. That could be a good uh, question, like how to organize them in unions and stuff. But, uh, um, aren't they striking in Serbia right now? Uh, school? No, okay. they are, they are like in high schools. They are, prof but that's uh, their workers. The, the people who who are educating uh, in the high schools, they are now struggling, and they are struggling pretty well because. They are making their uh, strike for like uh, three months now, and I don't know if it does it ever happen here, but they get got got the cut, and they striked, and they got another cut because of the strike, and they are now furious. I mean, they are now I don't know. My parents are in those unions who are fighting until the end, and they are I don't know. They can like half of their money cuts, and they don't know how to feed themselves. I mean, they're re really pretty much angry. And it's uh, 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 that question is uh, 
it's important now in Serbia, but it's not that much as it could be. It's a big uh, propaganda against those professors, like poor kids, they don't go to school. Uh, then a few days ago there was a big protest, and uh, the workers, I mean, what's the process? Process means. The education, they are like uh, going to the ministry with water, and you know, there was propaganda. What is the example for the kids uh, and stuff like that? Uh, but yeah, I mean, even in uh, teacher theaters in Serbia was were always uh, organized well. Sometimes they were reactionary, sometimes they were revolutionary, but they were always always organized well. That's that's the, the even in the nineties and uh, and now they are like the the. The leading force of any struggle in Serbia. There is their only one who's fight, who are fighting now. It's well that you reminded us of that. I, we didn't, uh, we forgot to mention to have a salute to our comrades in Serbia to fight. <laughs> So in Macedonia, uh, starting from the dean and all the teachers and professors uh, below him, they all start by being there from the government. But as our panel started, we noticed, uh, because there's no union of teachers or professors, we noticed that uh, they start together among themselves. So they also created a professor plan, a student plan, and they gave us their full support because uh, uh, other than supporting us, they have their own uh, demands. They have their theirs are not uh, quite met yet. But uh, when the occupancy occurred, they were with us 24/7. They gave us the full right to use the university. They held alternative uh, classes all the time. So uh, yes, everywhere they are divided especially because of the government, but I think that we woken them up and show them the right way of how it, it, it's, it's supposed to be. So we hope that in the future their demands are going to be met and we'll stick together with the professors. Thank you. Any other questions for our guests? Okay, then uh, I... Um, um, let's make a break of 10 minutes, because uh, 15 past 1, our professor will be joining us to give the final lecture, so until 1.15. <laughs> huh?